That's an artistic thing, too. Anyway. All right. We're here at the first episode of season six. I'm here with a very close friend, Barry Toronto. He's been my boss, been my friend, and I know him as a very creative person. Morning. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, well, is there anything you want to just start rolling with? Well, let's see. Um, well, we had talked about talking about um, just some um, life as an artist or what people try to do to um, to create art or what I've had to do. So um, I've been doing photography for quite a while. I went to my first school. First class was in 1973. Um, I'm really old, you know. So, um, <laughs> we all are. So I've always tried to maintain my love and respect for the medium and, and trying to keep doing photography. So I've had series over the years I try to work on. I was doing bodyscapes for a really long time, which is what these are, and then the reflections. I'm, st I'm still doing those two series. But I feel like I'm branching out a little bit more. Um, we had a show recently. I've been curating shows at the, the Bank of Marin in Mill Valley. So we did a show. The theme was time. And that was a really interesting subject for me. Um, it was kind of random how it came up, but I've been doing a lot of panoramics. And um, so if you take a panoramic and you follow something, you get a repeated pattern with an iPhone. Um, so the idea of time and then things changing and moving in time, um, the concept I really liked and I like the pictures. Um, and so then I've been doing this thing with kind of a one-two idea. So one of them that I've done recently is a reflection picture. And there's just um, the people in the picture are, have changed a little bit, obviously, you know, one moment to the next. So um, I'm kind of doing that now and a little bit like that. Um, and so it's, um, you know, life goes on. You've got all these things going on all the time and you're trying to... Um, what I feel like is trying to keep an artistic um, perspective, which is really making art all the time. Um, so I'm always trying to make art, and I try to do something every day. And um, I could probably be more disciplined. Um, like Eva, my wife, um, does a day a week where she's only doing her art. And I tend to do a little bit all the time. It's kind of the way I work. But um, And then things come up, you know, like trying to do projects and house things and cleaning up and so there's always things to distract us um and it was almost easier when i ran a business because i had other people to do sort of the um the day-to-day -day maintenance so to speak um but that that's kind of my my goal always is to just sort of create create and keep making things and trying to explore new ways of looking at things and making new work all the time. And it's also important, I think, to, to sort of branch out and talk to other people about it, which I really feel like um, I don't necessarily do enough of. But we have, there's a photo group at O'Hanlon that I actually found very useful, um, just as a way to show people things and people to communicate. We go on field trips. I love going to art. I mean, the Monet exhibit right now is um, pretty extraordinary at the Dion. Um and all those things, I think, become part of artistic passion is seeing what other people are doing and how it affects and relates to your own work in some way, you know. And it always does, I think. Um, not trying to compare myself to Monet so right now. Um, Didn't Monet start later in life? Was it Monet? Uh, no, you don't, I don't think so. Um, we saw a show not that long ago called The Early Years, which I've never okay. been as excited okay. about the early year Monet stuff, but it's it's um, beautiful stuff. This stuff, apparently he was, he was blind for nine years in um, the period that's showing right now at the De Young. Um, and they're very abstract. And, um, and the spatial arrangements and the way um, the edges are used and, and patterns, and they're very sparse. And the paint strokes are just, just really great. I mean, just looking at it close and seeing the paint is a really great thing. I mean, it's just really beautiful. Um, 
but there it, it's it's quite different than the early work and i don't know that I've, it's a really it's a large show and there's a lot of work there and so there's pictures like of the bridge and be pretty hard to tell it was a bridge but it's just um graphically and um color it's it's just gorgeous and um the movement and the way it's laid out and they're they're composed really nicely actually all right so with that terminology when you're talking about monet's paintings and there's a lot of elements to technical like the paint the stroke the choice right. of color how does that translate into photography at that level and depth well for me the the main thing that i really saw in his paintings that i really liked is um i mean that related in terms of photography for me was the way they were composed the way he did use edges and and they were they were it was almost it's like the way you would take a photograph in, in some ways like even if it's a lot of blue and there's just a splattering here there was one that was um i think the wisteria series where they're just like these little hanging things you certainly would know it's wisteria, except they tell you. And a lot of space around them in blue, but they were just, um, I liked the, the way it was composed. I liked the composition and, and the way it kind of, they, so in photography, you're always dealing with um, how objects relate to each other, how they relate to the, relate to the edge of the frame, how you fill the frame, um, and just the general sort of weight of the picture. Like if there's too much stuff in there, and I tend to do that. My reflections tend to be very, very um, full, like a lot of elements, because I'm dealing with what's inside the window, what's outside the window, it's merging together. And so, but you still need to have some kind of um, balance with everything in there. And a lot of elements is more difficult to do that with than something like the bodyscapes, which are really just about simple shape and form. But still, the way the subject comes into the area, the way the background relates, the landscape, the shapes. So I like the way he was using shape and composition a lot. Um, in terms of color, it's not really, I'm not sure. That, I mean, I, I don't use brush strokes. <laughs> so, but you know, there's texture and uh, there's obviously things in photos that but I'm not, I don't, so in a photograph, you, you go out and you photograph something. And to a large degree, you're working with something in the outside world. It's, um, and so you're, you're kind of not bound to those elements. I mean, my, my idea of photography is always to, I'm not really that interested in just what's out there. I want to transcend what's out there. I want to create something that I haven't seen before. And, and I don't really not interested in the bicycle. I'm interested in what I can make of the bicycle in terms of composition, color, framing, and all that. Um, and in these works, they go way beyond the subject. They are, they're not about the bridge for me. I mean, people were in there talking about, oh, yeah, that's the bridge in this garden. And, um, but there was a comment on one of the walls that said how he could take such a little mundane pond, and I'm not saying exactly the way he said it, and come up with these paintings is just astounding. And so it's true. He took something, he created the pond himself, apparently. He brought the water in and made the pond, and there's a lily pond, and all these people working to upgrade it, upkeep it, I mean. and um, But what he was able to take from it was these paintings, which go way beyond the pond. There's a black and white where it's kind of like, just doesn't look that great, but it's black and white, and it's an old photograph, but it's not like the paintings, which are just like, what? wow, you know. So how do you take something ordinary in the world and try to bring back something extraordinary? And I think that's what he did, and that's what um, I'm always trying to do something like that in photography, is to take something um, not necessarily ordinary. I mean, I photograph things I love. I photograph things that excite me. Um, but how can I build from the original thing I saw and have something new and different with it? Just that, so it's not just about the object. I mean, there's documentary photography, there's a, but even documentary photography, a lot of times you transcend, like you have a picture of somebody from 50 years ago. It really talks about the time period. It talks about, it talks about a lot more than just who that person that doesn't even talk about who that person was it talks about the mood uh, you know a lot of elements that um really change over time and 
So older photos have this kind of history built into them. So I don't think you can, if it's just a documentary, even a documentary photography needs to somehow transcend the subject so it becomes something more universal. But a document photographer is typically trying to um, tell you something about the subject and where it was made and who it is or something. So the photos I've seen you do of Burning Man, that seems to be more in the realm of a documentary photographer. That's true, yes. All right, so what are you doing to transcend the moment? In the Burning Man photos? Right. I don't think I am as much in the Burning Man photos. But again, Burning Man is such a sort of an extraordinary event that you're photographing things that are so unusual and potent and different that they sort of ex ex they go beyond the realm of ordinary just on their own in, in some degree. But when I'm photographing Burning Man, I am to a large degree trying to photograph elements at Burning Man and less so trans to transcend. I mean, if you think about a reflection picture, I mean, it's, it, it becomes very little about what was there and, and what it's become because of all the layering. And you have things in there that you can't really see when you're photographing. So I get a lot of surprises. Um, in the bodyscapes, I'm really trying to make the body no longer there. I'm trying to transcend the body. I'm trying to literally make landscape and try to, to do something different than what it is. At Burning Man, I'm, I'm literally trying to um, photograph the things there and sort of show them in a well-composed, colorful um, way. But it is more about documenting the event. I feel very similar about photographing live music. I'm really trying to capture the moment. And that's different than what I'm talking about in terms of bodyscapes or the reflections. Or even the, um, the panoramics where you have this repeated pattern. It, but it's like the, you know, it becomes about time and change and other elements that are different from this the person that was just walking down the street. Yeah, the panoramic seems to be more of an artistic endeavor from what you've described to me, because you get a blur, you get a chopped image. So there's an element of, it's, it's not an exact replication of this person here and now 10 feet or five feet or whatever over here, there's like slices, right? Right. So I do a lot of different kind of panoramics. A lot of them are, are more just simply landscape. Um, or I wouldn't say simply landscape, but they're about expanse and um, and space. So the, the um, what I call the wonky Siri panoramic, <laughs> um, is not is only a small part of what I'm doing with panoramics, but they are definitely um, I think um, trying to transcend the moment or something. I'm trying to. What have you learned in all your time as an artist to balance discipline so that you're bringing depth and knowledge and experience to something with the creative moment, so that because. It's in, in my experience, discipline can become rigid and dead, and there's no life to it anymore. Well, I think the discipline to me comes from, um, so you go shoot 500 pictures and you come back. It takes a lot of discipline to sort them, go through them, organize them, not lose them. Um, but when I'm photographing, I really try to be much more in the moment. I try not to... Um, I try not to be preconceived. I try not to just do the same thing over and over again. I'm looking and trying to see things that I think will work in, in sort of the um, structure of what I'm doing, like with the reflections I'm looking for. So with reflections, it's like the elements really do matter. Like if it's some, I mean, there are things that I don't really want to talk about in pictures, you know, in the world. Um, and there are things that, um, or more what I would like to show and talk about in the world. So I have to find subjects that work for me. I have to find the way they layer together. And I, I have to find a merging that um, sort of talks about all the elements in a play that fits together. So 
um, in the bodyscapes. I'm trying to do landscapes. It's pretty, um, well, it's, it's hard to have, it's easy to just take a, a naked body and photograph it, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not easy, but I'm just saying that um, the general concept would be that here's a naked body, but to take it and have it really visually um, speak to you in a, in a graphic and way. And, and for me, again, trying to get beyond the body itself um, so that it becomes more about shape, form, landscape. Um, so I can't go out and, and plan how to do that. I have things that have worked before. But I really, if I'm not in the moment and trying to figure out what's going on right now in the actual space I'm in, then I can't really um, be original and find something new. I could go do the same picture over and over again and maybe get better at it. And I tend to do that sometimes. There's something that works and I'll try it again. But um, my best work is, I think, for me, has always been... Um, when I, it's almost like the when I did water pictures for a long time, it was very meditative. I had to really sort of just, for me, in, in a sense, try to, kind of try to become one with what I was photographing, which I think is what a big part of photography is for me. You have to sort of, um, you have to become part of what's happening out there and merge with it in a sense. You have to identify with it and you have to be a part of it. Um, working with a model is not just about this person over there and you're over here, there's a relationship. There's a, a connection, and the better that connection is, not necessarily maybe, but, I mean, I think the better the photograph's going to be. Um, Do you have any experiences where there was someone who you're like oil and vinegar, but the photograph came out beautifully? Not in the bodyscapes. I, I feel like I've been really lucky. I mean, I've had models that work better in, than others. And so if a model's comfortable, it's it's really much easier than if a model's kind of rigid and tight the way they're sitting. Um, you don't really want that. And so some, and if it's cold outside, I actually like goosebumps, but if it's cold outside, it might be more difficult, but it always depends on the models. There's certain models I've worked with that will start shivering and I, I just, we stop, but they want to keep going, you know? And there are other models that it's just a little cold and they don't want to do it anymore. So um, all those are just kind of the facts of life and not really about how well it works or not. Um, session, a good photo session can have a lot of different elements. The light, the timing, how I'm doing that well day, how she's doing that day. So it has a lot more to do with just like who the person is and where the picture's taken. Um, and there is this um, synthesis that happens that, that makes a photograph. So if we're both in sync and we're working together and we're sort of um, one, so to speak, then things are going to flow better. If she's not comfortable or I'm off or the light's not right, bright sunny day's really difficult, you know. I mean, it's easy enough to go at the right time. Um but it's also hard, hard to coordinate people. And sometimes you just go do a shoot because this is when you can do it. It's easy enough to go in the morning or the afternoon, but even that's no guarantee it's going to, you know, but you learn when to go. But um, there's still a lot of elements is all I'm really saying. What about something like the reflections where it really is just you? and Yeah, the reflections. Um, so, yeah, it's it's you don't have this relationship with people, which is um, um, another layer of something. Um, the, the reflections for me is a quieter way to do it because I'm kind of by myself more and unless I'm trying to keep up with my wife running down the street or something maybe. But um, so I have to focus more on what's there. I'm actually looking for things to photograph. I'm looking for things and looking for the right angles and trying to be conscious of um, what's going to happen with all these elements once they, they're photographed. So um, I think it's still a pro spontaneous process. I think my process is very similar once I get working. Once I'm on the beach with a model or I'm looking at a window, 
my um, focus is really what's in front of me and how I can deal with it and what's the shape, how's the frame being filled, um, what am I trying to do, what am I doing. So I'm very focused on the camera when I'm photographing. And that's very similar, whether it's a model or a window or... But um, people are complicated. Like, you have to find the right time to go. Maybe they cancel. Um, but I've, I've never really felt... Um, I've never felt an awkwardness with with models, I would say. How's your personal growth been affected, supported, challenged with your art? Art. Well, for me, art is a way of looking inside and and looking at life and trying to make some kind of sense of it. So it's very important for me, for whatever reason, to create things. And it's a way of expressing who I am. Um, it's a way of thinking about who I am and wh what I can bring to the world. Um, and so making things that are original and um, exciting for me changes who I am because I feel like I've accomplished something. So I, I think um, I have a um, part of my nature is to always want to be creating and being challenged and being busy. I don't really like to sit around and watch TV, although movies can be great, but um, it's important <coughs> to me to um, feel like I'm being creative and creating stuff. And what that does is, um, I mean, it, you know, like I didn't go into photography as a business because I wanted to um, keep my photography as something um, more artful. And it was maybe a good decision, maybe not. But I went into the printing business instead. Even the printing business, you're dealing with, I mean, you know, folding a sheet of paper and keeping it straight. And um, so all the technical aspects of just creating and doing things and, um, you know, working in Photoshop and working with Lightroom. I think all those keep your help keep your mind sharper and keep... So even just the process of doing things, I think helps keep me alive and more active and more um, sharp, so to speak. Um, but the exciting thing is to come up with something. I mean, I remember being in a dark room, especially when I first started photography, and seeing something developing in the tray. I mean, what a magical... Um, alchemical moment to see something coming up and wow look at that you know you can see the film black and white film and negative <laughs> is i mean you learn to read it but it's not like seeing what's really there once you print it or see it on the screen now so um so i do love the process it's it's, it's an alchemy it's like turning um you know something ordinary into something more extraordinary and I think that affects the people, too. It affects me. It changes me. It makes me understand um, the world better in my relation to it, to photograph it and to come up with images that I feel like express something or help me um, learn about who I feel like I am or <laughs> want to be. <laughs> Are you the person you want to be? I feel like I've been really lucky. I mean... um, You know, what 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 makes success, what makes a person happy? I mean, for me, it's been more important for me to, to create photographs than, I mean, it'd be nice to be in galleries or to show work more or have more people see my work. Um, on the other hand, um, I've made it really important to just keep creating work and finding ways to show it. and But I feel like my success for me as a person, is I'm in a position where I can do what I really love to do and want to do, which is make art or make pictures. And you could argue whether it's art or not, and I'm fine with that. But um, um, So I feel like that's been my success. Um, I left the printing business so I could do more art, and it's funny how it doesn't really work that simply. Other things fill the voids. There's other things you have to get done and do. Um, people ask me how is retirement, you know, it's like, um, I don't, you know, I retired from the printing business. I, I didn't retire from life. 
and it's actually almost busier now because it's just more complicated. It's easy to go in and take people's orders and print. I mean, it's not easy, but it's very straightforward. But creating work and, and being on top of what you're doing and, and keeping the inspiration and the ability to continue to do it is very challenging. Um, and I, I was able to do that in the printing business. There was a 10-year period where we just started the business and um, I was doing definitely less photography. Um, but it came back around and um, I was luckily, I was lucky to own a business where I could leave when I needed to or whatever. So I could still do projects when I wanted to. Um, and I had other people working there that could, you know, get the jobs done. <laughs> so when we met, you were doing waterscapes. Right. Was that after this 10 year period you're talking about? Where I think that was right at the end of it. Yeah. That's one of the waterscapes. Actually, I think Dog Motion came. Maybe around the same time, but Dog Motion and Waterscapes, the writing on the water is what I call a series, um, were right around, I think the Waterscapes, the writing on the water is probably first and then Dog Motion. But those were when I first started photographing again after the period of feeling like Widget was getting started. I had done water in um, college. It was part of my senior study. So I photographed water and so the writing on the water is the the little squiggles you get from the sun reflecting on the water. And um, I was doing it in black and white, and um, they were sort of really uh, micro close-ups of the writing on the water. And um, when I revisited again, when you're talking about it, it was more in color, and um, but it was a similar. It was a backed up a little bit, and um, so it was a little different, but it was something I had worked on before. And then even the water, the uh, bodyscapes, they're all done in, at the beach. So water is um, a really important element to me and a big part of my astrology. Um, and I really like photographing water. I like the idea of water. I like the movement of water, and I tend to be around a lot of water. So <clears throat> with the bodyscapes, I've seen you... I've seen a couple of photos where the waves and motion of the water were actually a part of the photo, but it's rare, like out of all, you know. Well, I'll put it this way. I try to do it a lot. If the model can't handle cold, we're not getting in the water here. I did a, some, a shoot one time in Hawaii, and Hawaii would be a much easier place to do it. But the other complicated thing about that is the water's moving very fast. The model's being moved. Um, I, I work on a lot, and I have some that I really love, like that one. Um, we show it, but that the um, water movement um, is something um, I try to do a lot, and it, it's it's not easy to be successful. But there's, I mean, this is a picture from this is really early, right? And this is just a wave over a body, right? Um, so that's um like water movement. <clears throat> But she was willing to go in, in the water and um, be kind of um, wet. Was this a beach um, or was this a stream? Or It's right at the beach. It's at Muir yes, Beach, indeed. and so it's on the edge, sort of. Okay. And it's hard to find water like that there, actually. Um, and getting in the waves, they're rushing and stuff. But I've tried to work quite a bit with um, rushing water, and I love it. Uh, and it's something I've been doing more recently, too. I have a model I worked with a lot last year that... It's totally willing to get in the water. A lot of models do not want to get wet, and I'm fine with that. Now, I use spray bottles a lot just to kind of, because even a little moisture really helps in the texture and the and the um, glistening and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> we each have a passion for music. Have you ever used music in a shoot or as you're working? to influence. Oh, I, I would listen to music all the time. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, is that that's what you're meaning? And it does kind of, I mean, I don't on the beach, obviously. Right. Um, well, or even so when I'm you, shooting reflections. But. Have you ever, so when you're shooting reflections, do you have like headphones on? No, no. When I'm photographing, I don't listen to music. If I was in a studio situation, I might be listening to music. But I don't photograph in the studio much. And I'm not really one to carry headphones around and listen to the iPod while I'm walking around. Um... But I really love photographing live music, and part of what I love about photographing, and again, I think it's more about documenting 
um, is those instants you can catch the moments where a person really you can just feel the singing or feel the impact of the moment. So yeah. I, I love photographing music. I I went to your website last week. It's been a while since I've been there, and I saw it. It's not Emmy Lou Harris. It's or was it Emmy Lou Harris from? It looked like it was at the Harley Strickler, probably. Yeah. Was it Emily Lou with the white? Yeah. Is that Emily Lou? Uh, I think so. Think. Who's the she other She does one? have white hair now. <laughs> yeah, it was Emily Lou Harris. That was a great shot. And I think that captured what you're talking about. Like, I'm, you know, I don't know her, obviously, but I've been a fan of hers for 30 years or something. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to capture that essence I attribute to who she is. Well, Hartley Strictly is an amazing event, obviously. And um, she's been a big part of it for a really long time. She's actually closed that show for, I think, since it, since it opened, however many years that is. So, but yeah, it's it's amazing to to see people change over time and grow from brown hair yeah, and yeah. white hair. <laughs> Do you think your Tai Chi practice has influenced your photography? Well, Tai Chi is really important for a couple of reasons for me. One is that um, I feel like it helps me keep grounded more and, and makes it healthier. Tai Chi is about um, st stimulating the chi or, or moving the chi. So it's about um, not being stagnant. So um, I feel like it's a very important health um, benefit for me. But I think the calming and um, I think it's part of my nature. I mean, Tai Chi, I think it's definitely helped. Um yeah, I guess I was more, a little more like that growing up as a teenager, maybe. I don't know. But um, I, I would say Tai Chi, the, Tai Chi is a meditation and it is a focus. And I think that certainly helps um, a creative endeavor where you're trying to focus and concentrate. So um, I don't necessarily tie the two together, but I, I think... Um, they do go together in that way, and I, w I would say that Tai Chi has definitely helped my focus, as well as my health yeah. <laughs> and balance. <laughs> has photography helped your health? Well, chemicals, I'm um, growing up, probably not the greatest thing in the world, but um, has photography helped my health? So photography's helped my health and, and mental health, for sure. I mean, so again, um, I mean... If, for me, it's really important to keep my mind active and, and, and feel like I'm creating things and, and having things move. And that's very healthy for the mind. So the whole activity, if you think about depressed people, typically they don't know what to do with themselves. So they don't know. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for being depressed. I'm no expert on depression. But um, if you've got things you're excited about, you're much less likely to be depressed. So photography keeps me more on my toes and more excited about life and feeling like I'm creating things and doing things that are meaningful. So in that way, it's been very helpful mentally as well as emotionally. Is putting it out into the world for public viewing a piece of that health? It is, but I'm really not that good at that and not, um, I'm, um, I mean, I guess it's not unusual for an artist to not be the best marketer or, you know, for those to be sort of different aspects. I don't really um, push my work very well and I don't really show it very well. <laughs> and um, I'm not very good at getting into galleries. So it's a piece of the puzzle that I've never really um, been that successful at if, if, if that's an important piece of the pie, which um, it is to some degree, because there's only so much you can make work. And, and I mean, I've got closets and closets that are, you know, full of pictures. At some point, you want them to move to and do something with them. So that hasn't been the best part of my um, ability to get people out there. But yeah, the, so the thing about showing work to other people is um, obviously the response um, you learn a lot from showing pictures. People see things you didn't intend or didn't didn't see, and um, and people, especially the reflection pictures, I hear all the time. People say, "I see things differently now." You know, every time I go by a window, I see 
the reflection, and I never noticed it before. Um, and it is a different way of looking, because you normally look at glass, you don't see the inside and outside. You see inside, you probably don't even see the reflection, you know, unless you're looking for it. So it's a way to... Um, Photography is about communicating. So if nobody's ever seeing my pictures and I'm just doing it in a vacuum, I'm only doing um, half the process, I feel like. Although there were plenty of people that did that. Vivian Meyer, nobody ever saw her pictures. I mean, she just made pictures, ended up in a big um, <laughs> trunk. <laughs> right, but doesn't it seem like it going public is the completion of her yeah, work? Yeah, it changed it a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, it went public many years later and also was edited by people that were really good at editing. So the photographs that were chosen and, um, you know, the way they're put together a lot of times is really well done in a way that she probably wouldn't have been able to do. I and mean, maybe she would have been able to, but... So how do you think someone like Maplethorpe, who did make a huge name and career for themselves, even Andy Warhol to a degree, but so let's stick with Maplethorpe. That balance of marketing and creativity, he seems like someone who did that. Do you think part of it was the shock essence and playing that up? Uh, shock essence probably had something to do with that, but um, I think that um, he, he was around a lot of people. A lot of people were seeing his work. Um, he got into galleries fairly early that were very controversial, but his work is very powerful and was out there. And, you know, it's just like saying um, somebody like Dylan, is somebody like that going to make it? Be hard for him not to. I mean, just because there's so much um, raw sort of talent and um, expression there. So I think, you know, maybe he was somewhat lucky too, but I think people were seeing his work and, and really affected by it. And also it was a really, um, it was a really lively time in America. I mean, the whole gay movement and, I mean, it was very, um, it was things people had never seen before. Was and it? he was really good. I mean, the, the quality of his work is, um, you know, it wasn't just pictures of, Whatever they were, they were they were beautiful, beautifully um, done. I mean, the technical aspects of his work is um, he was really good. I mean, his use of lighting, like on and on. You mentioned Dylan, and, and it does seem like both Maplethorpe and Dylan, a part of their success was the environment they were. Well, I, I mentioned Dylan only, I mean, it kind of clicked in my head too fast to really think about, but um, there was a point, I mean, apparently when Dylan wrote A Rolling Stone, he was thinking about not doing uh, music anymore and he was writing a book. I know how true that is, but that's what I've heard. But I know that there was a, a juncture before he, where he didn't know if he was going to go into music and he didn't go planning. He was really in, affected by music. I don't see how he could have done anything else, but um, he was um, called Hammond's Folly. So when he first started recording for Columbia, they thought, who is this guy? He's funky, um, folky, weird looking. Um, so without Hammond, would he have really gotten in right then and created those first records? I don't know. Um, so there was a, there was a play, maybe luck, maybe whatever, but and Hammond, there was other people that he had similar effects with, that he really understood the raw talent. But it wasn't like the executives at Columbia understood it at the time. And I don't think his first record really did very well. You know, I mean, it was, it was a stretch. And with Dylan, too, a lot of, I mean, his songs were so powerful. It was other people doing his songs that actually made him, um, made people know about his music a lot in the beginning, more so than him doing them. Well, it also seems like the big risk he took when he went electric. Well, he was already pretty he well was established. Huge. Right, but yeah. that, like... That was a huge risk. Right, and... Right. So there, 
does seem like well, he was thing. always willing to take risk and then, right. and not worried about what he had been, but was really looking at what he the future. And, right. and I think that's what's so brilliant about him, actually. Do you find that real in any artist? Do I find it real in any artist? Yeah, like there's that part of what creates a master artist is that ability to take risks and be forward thinking. I would agree with that. I mean, there, there's, um, I mean, so for me, I define art as, as um, taking something ordinary and making something extraordinary. I mean, I kind of, I define art for me, what I'm trying to do a lot of and what I feel like is my most creative work is trying to transcend the subject. If somebody is a um, metalsmith, I think they still have to take chances. But I, I think it depends on what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, for some people, taking risk and um, trying to always find a new horizon isn't necessarily going to be what's going to... I mean, it took a long time to paint the Sixteen Chapel, right? It wasn't about... It was about taking chance and risk, but I'm just saying that I think that that has some play to that. I mean, for me, I would say that I agree with that, but it depends on the art and what people are doing. Um, if you're a documentary photographer and you're trying to show what the South looked like in the 20s, you're taking risks, but maybe you're not trying to, um, maybe you're really trying to clearly show what was there, not your interpretation or some, um, you know, different version of it. You're really trying to, so, you know, what that statement means, I think, is multi-layered. Did you see Black Klansman? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> what was powerful, but yeah, part of the power of that movie for me was him putting in the Charlottesville and that chaos. Right, absolutely. The way he tied ancient old history with modern with craziness, right where we're right back where we were way back then in so many ways. Or that not even left is what I got. Left, like, wow, right. we really didn't. Right. It's always been there and just um, maybe pushed under the rug and now it's all. But it's important to show that stuff. And he, yeah, I, I, I thought that the way he tied the old and the new and the relevance and all that and just even the um, interviews and that the black guy who goes in as the white guy. I mean, it's really got a lot of great twists to it. It was brilliant. Yeah. So for yourself, like I talked with you a couple of weeks ago and you said you're at this place of challenge. Like you're looking for this next theme to work with. Right. Are you f f seeking challenge as an artist? Well, I hope I can always say I'm seeking challenge as an artist. I'm certainly trying to do that. Um, I think my work... So I've been doing reflections and bodyscape for a really long time. The music thing um, is more about documenting, but it, it really keeps my skill up in photography. And um, I like working with time, and that's a lot about time. The actual moment of a photograph, that instant, is really a decisive moment that um, really comes out in um, music photography. And it's, it's one of the biggest challenges of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually at a point now where I'm trying to sort of broaden. Like, I go to a city, and I just look at windows, and I photograph reflections. And I'm starting to think, well, and um, I've been doing reflections for a while. I think it was, like, 2005 or something, I think I did my first one. So I'm at a point now where I go and do it, and it's not as fresh and as exciting, and different. I mean, it's more challenging somehow and, and more difficult, whereas for a long time, it just was like really natural to do it. And I still like doing it. Um, but one of the pictures I made recently was that I took a reflection picture and I took two together. And so it was a one-two kind of thing. And I did it as a um, 12 by 36 print. So it's kind of a change from it. And it's not really just about the reflection anymore. It's more about time and but it has those elements of reflections that I really like, like the floor. It's got all this texture and, you know, I can't even quite tell what it is, but it's from the reflection. Um, so, 
Yeah, I'm looking sort of for new ideas and new directions to go. I, I would put it that way. Um, and the panoramics has been... I really like panoramics. I like the expansive way of looking at things. Um, and the stuff I've showed recently is, is a little different than what I've showed in the past with the time idea and even the picture I just submitted to the O'Hanlon Center was sort of different for me than what I've done in the past, which is typically a reflection or a bodyscape. And when I showed the art festival, I always um, showed the reflections and the bodyscapes. So I have to be, I like being in themes. I like having a um, series of work that's really important to me. I feel like you build on it and um, develop it. So you just said a little earlier that now going to the city, there's an element of challenge. It doesn't flow. It's not like Disneyland where before when you first were doing reflections, mm -hmm. it was just fit, right? It was just joyful. Now there's an element of, would you say sameness? Like I've been here already, and that's challenging. It's in not itself. really that. It's, it's so I did dog. I did dog motion for probably two years, maybe one year, and at the end of that period, there was a point where it didn't work anymore, and I can't even tell you why. I mean, I was photographing things in motion. I was panning with the dogs. All of a sudden, I was like not that person anymore, and. I would try and it wouldn't even work. And Reflections is kind of like that right now, although uh, I'm pretty excited about the picture I just did where I put the two together and I, I want to do more of that. Um, Taking dogmatic promotions, what you just described. So in your experience, is it wiser to go with that? Go, okay, it's not working. I'm not that person. Let me move on. Or... Could there be something in the discipline of sitting in it, sitting in a challenge, going, all right, let me just work through whatever this is? Until well, there's I'm definitely, um, I mean, just to stop something because it's not working is probably a mistake. Um, I would say that I felt like I was beyond, I was done with that project and I didn't, it wasn't something I needed or wanted to do anymore. Um, I think that it's very important to work through problems and like reflections. I don't feel done. I feel like I'm at a point where it's changed and it's more difficult, but that's not a reason that I want to stop it. Um, but I'm not getting as much that was exciting as I used to get. But I think it's important to, I'm still excited about the idea of it and I'm still doing it because I want to, push through that and try to learn um, how to do it better. My cameras are a lot better now. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to possibly keep doing it, but I've made a couple of recent pictures that I'm very excited about. It's just not like there was a year where a lot of my series is from that year, you know, and even bodyscapes. There were certain years where they, I really was um, prolific in terms of what I was trying to do. Um, and now I might go off one model, I might go out 10 times in a year, but I'm not going out every day, twice a week with different people. And so it's a different process that, um, it sounds like there's wisdom in knowing when something's truly completed and when something's in a place of challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would say that's a good way to put it. And just because something's completed doesn't mean you won't come back to it later. I mean, I photographed water in school, right. and it was like 15 years later, I started photographing it again from a very different perspective, but it was from a very similar idea. So does this creative process work in the day-to-day -day elements like you're describing how you thought when you left Widget, you'd have more time for your artistry, and the truth is actually... Life. <laughs> right, right. So do you f find a creative wisdom that works in paying bills, dealing with neighbors, elements of life that one would say aren't creative, but the creative process helps those endeavors? Well, the question really makes me think of Tai Chi. Because Tai Chi, you go in a room, you do Tai Chi. How do you take that into your... Out life 
waiting at the bus. So we're always trying to develop, stimulate. Um, so my approach to photography, I would say, is, is similar to my approach to life, which is, I mean, it, it has to be. I mean, who's going to be a completely different person when they work than when they go out in the world? So um, I think one of the things for me creatively is patience is really important. Like um, it can take a long time to get something to work. I used to shoot um, black and white film with the uh, bodyscapes and I'd scan them in and they're just, you would tend to get a lot of dust and there were ways to avoid it. And, but I would tend to sit there for hours dotting out little dots. But it was kind of a nice process too. It was meditative and it was, um, and I would get a reward when I was done. I don't have to do that anymore with the new technologies. Um, but I think it's important to be patient and get through processes. And so even with neighbors and city of Mill Valley, I think that um, it might take a lot of time. It might be really difficult, but I tend to want to just keep trying to make it work or doing what I need to do to take it to the next step. Um, and patience like that does eventually generally work, I think. Giving up doesn't work as well if you want to get something done. So, um, I mean, it's an interesting question. Um, people ask all the time in Tai Chi how to take that outside the classroom. And I, I think your walking changes. I think the way you see the world. And um, I think the way... A photograph is similar to the way I um, try to approach the world. Um, photo photography is a really nice um, way for me to focus and really be in the moment, as is Tai Chi. Um, that's one of the things I love about it. And if you're dealing with neighbors, you still have to stay calm. You have to be in the moment. You can't get um, emotional or it doesn't help to get emotional. And so photography, you know, you sit there for hours and hours working on these things um, because, you know, eventually you're going to hopefully finish. I mean, there's things that will never get finished. There's paintings that get thrown away. <laughs> Dang it, not everything works. But um, persistence and um, just sticking to it really help. So I try to do that in life and photography. For you, not me. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world.